Uh-oh, it looks like we piqued your interest in the hideout. First of all, let me tell you what the hideout is not. The hideout is not for hustlers, for grinders, or for people who are looking for a shortcut to what the world calls success. The hideout is about growing as men, creating lifelong friendships, and having the time of our lives. Are you ready to tap in to the endless source that will take you from success to significance? The hideout is two and a half days of hiking, biking, and doing the little things that it takes to create lifelong friendships. I find that joy is nothing more than falling in love with your current circumstances and allowing magic to happen. And that's when we see growth in every area of your life. Have you accomplished your goals professionally and financially? and you still thirst for something more? Has success in these areas come at the expense of far more valuable things like your family, your children, and your relationships? Alignment in business, strategic partnerships, and joint ventures all come from true relationships. The Hideout is designed to get to know people before you'll ever meet them. This is not your typical mastermind. The Hideout is focused on the one thing that will fuel everything joy. And when joy is overflowing in your life, you'll find growth in your marriage, your relationships, and oh yeah, your business. Welcome to the Kelly Cardenas podcast where attitude is everything. Um, on today's show, we have, I'm going to give the, the, the titles for this man because the, I mean, he de, like I asked him before the show, is there anything that you don't do? Because he does everything. And then when he does everything, then he wants to do more and he wants to serve people at the highest level. And the reason why I think that he succeeds at the level that he does in this uncommon kind of success is because he's constantly serving everybody else. He's a CEO of Lab Coat Agents. He's the CEO of a brilliant tribe and now CMO of success enterprises. But that's just the tip of the iceberg of what this man is doing. And it's incredible to be able to see because not only is he in these positions, but also he connects with people at a level that I can't even imagine. Every time I get on the phone with him, I text with him, or I get on a video call with him, he makes me feel like I'm the greatest person in the world and he almost blends into the background. So I'm so excited to be able to spend time with him today, to be able to put the spotlight on him, which he'll try and put the spotlight on everything else and talk about everybody else, but this is the man that honestly, if you follow and then you get to know, it'll absolutely change your life. So please welcome to the show, Mr. Tristan Almada. Thanks, man. That's a that's a really nice that's a really nice intro. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like, just so you know, I also felt like you were talking about yourself because we're so similar. Well, so, I, th I think it's the, I think it's the 805, right? All my fr all my <laughs> all the people that are listening from the 805, I, I I tell you the reason why I like this guy right off the bat. I met him, and my mom gave me three principles growing up. She said, "Be really kind to everyone, contribute to everyone, make a ton of friends, and then really stay, stay really curious." And when that happens, you don't really have to be good at anything because you have friends who are good at it. And I have a friend in in Tristan that when I heard his name. And then my friend connected us, Paige connected us through text. I saw the 805 and I said, this guy has got to be cool. So Trist <laughs> Tristan, and that's the only reason why I like you, Tristan. So the 805 connection, but uh, help, help me to understand too, um, you know, you were, before the show, we were talking about like you were constantly looking at uh, what more could I do? Where does this giving come from? I mean, was this something that you were raised with, with your parents? You know, I, I thought that I thought about that the other day and yeah, it definitely goes back to my upbringing. Like where, where can I pinpoint back and say, Hey, I, I learned this from, and it's, it's a combination of my mother and father for sure, because I watched them. We learn from watching others. Right. So I always watched how my mom was always giving to other people. And then I watched how my dad was always in in a situation where he was serving others as well. So, so yeah. help help people to understand too, uh, Tristan, how many people are involved with lab coat agents? So 
we have we, we have the largest community for real estate agents in the world. So that means if you combine everything that we have, meaning the Facebook group, the texting community, the newsletter, and all of our socials, we have over 500,000 real estate agents. And, and there are about a little over 2 million real estate agents, One point, about 1 1.5 realtors with the designation realtors. But out of those, you have only about 600,000 that actually work and produce anything. So, you know, we've got a good chunk of those that actually produce, which is great, man. So how, why was it so important for you to be able to commu uh, create a community? Because a lot of times, and this is what has, has fascinated me about you, is because you're not just about you doing it and you getting all the spoils. You're constantly looking to be able to build everyone else up. Like, I, I mean, you, you do the, this with me, and this is not, uh, you don't do it and, and post about it. You don't post our text together, but you're constantly reaching out to me and saying, hey, man, I got this opportunity for you. I think this would be cool. Why is that so important as opposed to you just eating? I've never been asked that question, so give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think part of it is because I hate attention. Um, I know I need to go out there and do things, but I hate attention on me specifically. And so I always look to see what the talents are of people so that I can bring them in and showcase them. That, that's the whole idea of why I start the companies and I na never name them like Tristan Almada company, right? It's more like lab code agents. A brilliant tribe, drunk on social, ascent, right? Uh, all, all of these these companies that I create, I never use my name because it just feels like it's not me. It's a it's a conglomerate of all of the amazing people that I work with, and so that that's part of where it stems from. Uh, the other part is that I know that I can't do everything. Like I'm only good at a certain, a very small niche, right? And all the other people that come in are amazing at other things. So I'll, I want to make sure that they feel like they're part of something that they also own. And if I have in my name to it, or if I say, hey, I can do this or that, you do this, you do that. It doesn't feel like you can grow with that. So that's part of part of it. I don't know if I answered the question fully. I've never been asked that question before. <laughs> well, there's a lot of questions, hopefully, that you're going to get asked on this podcast that you haven't been asked before. I asked I asked two questions before we started uh, with, with Tristan. I said, number one, do we have a time frame? And number two, is there anything off limits? And I tell you, Tristan, I, and I, I'm a very big fan of Jay-Z, huge fan of Jay-Z. I love Jay-Z. Now, I, I, I have to tell you the truth, though. I wasn't always a fan of his music. I, I'm a fan of, oh. of, of the concept of what he does. And I'm a fan of his music. I'm, I'm an appreciator. I'm more of a De La Soul, Tribe Called Quest. That kind of, that hip hop to me is where it's at. But what I loved about Jay-Z uh, when they talked about it is that he would go into the studio and because he had practiced his craft at such a high rate, he wouldn't write out his rhymes. And he wouldn't write them out and read them off. He would go in and they called him one take Jay a lot of times because he would go in and he would hear the beat and one take, bam, he would be able to do it. Well, it inspired me with the podcast because what I wanted to do is, and, and if you notice this, I, I have never sent any questions out to anybody before we start the podcast because I want to be yeah. able to get true answers, right? So here's, here's the one that, that I hear from you, right? And what I see in you is... It takes a crazy amount of confidence to be able to put people first. Like, and it takes mm. a crazy amount of confidence to compliment people on the level that you do, because most people are not willing to compliment people because they think that they're going to take their lunch if they get too big. Where did this confidence come from and how can a person develop it in themselves? Mm, good question, man. I didn't always have that because we grow up in a world where we're told to you, you have to be that person that that takes what you want, right? And we, we've it, that goes into the whole same culture, which is like you've got to hustle, you've got to go all in, and and but but that creates the wrong type of world that that we want to live in, and where we feel the most comfortable to be able to live a life that that we can look back and we're proud of, right? So that that stems from, I think, me reading a shit ton. That's it. Because I'm, I'm reading books that 
when I read them, I'm like, oh man, I've been doing that all wrong, right? And and I think you become more aware of best practices that dead people that wrote their best. Because remember, when they write books, they're showing you the lessons they learned or the best of themselves, right? Typically, if, if they're writing books, if it's about somebody, then you get to see their whole life. But when I look at the book and I'm reading, I'm like, they put their best foot forward here or the lessons they want me to learn. And it kind of shortens my process. So I don't have to experience this. I can just learn from it. And the more I read, the more I realize that I'm just great at less and less. I'm like, oh, shit, I, I guess I stuck <laughs> at everything. Um, and then I was like, I guess the best way to live, and, and I've done interviews where I've, I've talked to people that have told me this. It's like, it really starts with humility. It starts with humility. It starts with you taking the back seat and you putting as many people first. That doesn't mean that you don't do what you're great at, right? Because what you what you're great at usually shines because you're so great at it, right? And you, you it, it goes through. Now I'll tell you, there is a challenge though, because now I'm working in in the corporate world and I've, I've had to adjust a little bit because I'm used to coming in and just having no um, no other people to to work with at a certain level and and have some type of uh, opinions and saying, hey, no, 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 we've been doing it this way for so long. Let's continue to do it this way. And and I'm, I'm having to adjust a little bit. Sorry, it froze there. Um, I'm having to adjust a little bit. And the adjustment is me going back to myself and saying, wait a second. Is it my ego that's talking? What is it? Right. And I think that that has become a challenge. Uh, for me to look back and say, how often can I look back and say, am I leading with my ego or am I leading with humility? And am I putting the people around me first? So it comes down to awareness. How often are you looking back and saying, did I, did I live the life that I wanted to today? Did I treat the people around me the best that I could? And I can tell you, the more you challenge yourself, the more you realize that you're going to screw up even more. And I like screwing up, man. I like screwing up a lot because I'm like, oh, damn it. I didn't treat this person the way I would have loved to treat this person. And then you have to send out a text and apologize, or you have to jump on a call and apologize uh, or a Zoom and, or meet them in person. But the more situations you put yourself in, the more you're going to grow. I think we're just scared to fail so much. That's it. What gave you the confidence and who gives you the permission to fail? The confidence comes from practice. So the more you show up, the more confidence uh, you create, which is crazy, right? It's uh, it's almost like counterintuitive. You don't you're not born with confidence. You don't have the confidence. You're you always have self doubts throughout the whole time. Uh, you just show up so much. You know what to do. So it looks like you're confident. Like um, you know, most of the time. You want me to switch my camera? Is it freezing on your end or no? If it was just a little bit, but I mean, we could still, we still hear you really well. You're super, about, super handsome still. How about this? Is this, there is we this go. flowing better? Seems to be flowing flow better. better. Yeah, okay. flows better. We'll do, it, we'll do it like this. This is my MacBook camera. Okay. So, um, yeah, dude, I think the confidence comes from just showing up. And a lot of us have fear to show up. And the, you, 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 if you want more confidence, you've got to do it more. So you want to, you want to look better physically, you got to show up more in the gym right? You got to eat better. If you want more confidence in writing, you've got to write more. If you want more confidence in being a better husband, a better spouse, then you got to show up more in that fashion. You just got to do more of it. If you don't use it, you lose it. That's a funny statement, is it? but it's true. <laughs> so did, did you did you see this, Tristan? Did you see it embodied with your parents? Or did you see it uh, like aunts, uncles? Did you see it around? Or did you see the opposite side? Because I find that people are either, they, they either emulate it, right? Because they saw it, or they saw something that they didn't want to be, and then they become that. Yeah, I saw the opposite. Uh, I saw the opposite with my, with my dad, because I grew up in an environment where, um, 
we we had to go my mom and i had to go get my dad from bars in the middle of the night and and be like where is my dad right because he was a heavy drinker and um i also saw how much that hurt my mother and i was like well i don't want to do that but then here's the other part to this because there's just never one straight part um my dad was also there for me to to play with me a ton and he showed me that consistency creates a better form of you in whatever you're being consistent with and so there there are a lot of parts to to us i mean we all have parts where we fail miserably and other parts that that help us look at look at things and say that that's that's i'm proud of that right so i i have to take the good and the bad from from my parents but they're definitely an example of what not to do and then also what to do like i learned how to treat my kids and how to be a better father from my dad but at the same time i also learned what i didn't want to do with my spouse because of my dad uh so yeah it plays it plays a big role into it man and i think the direction you end up taking is sometimes by accident a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs and people that have achieved greatness in different forms of their life they don't they don't acknowledge that some of it is absolute luck it's a blessing it just you happen to be at the right place at the right time with the right skills and i'm telling you right now a lot of it is just chance we just happen to have the right skills to be able to take advantage of those opportunities so how do, how are you able to live in the culture where in, in the real estate culture a lot of times you uh, hit on it earlier it's the hustle, hustle, hustle. It's the crush the goals. It's the, the and and then you meet Tristan, and Tristan is the CEO of one of the largest impacting tribes, not only with beautiful tribe, but or a brilliant tribe, but also with lab coach agents. That is almost the. You said that there is only six hundred thousand active people or active real estate agents, and we you've got almost five hundred thousand of them. So that's only a hundred thousand that's not with you. But in this culture that says you yeah. got to hustle, you got to grind, you got to wake up, you got to push, you got to do this. And then you meet Tristan and Tristan is saying, like, you got to be humble. You got to build a community. You got to serve other people. How were yeah. you able to survive in that type of environment with a completely different side? I think early on, I realized that if I wanted to succeed at a high level as an agent, because, you know, we are also in the top 1% in the world for real estate teams, right? So... I realized early on because I was doing the same thing, dude. I came into this. I'm like, I got a door knock all day. I got to make a ton of calls. I was take. I would. I've been married for 25 years. So when I jumped into real estate, my wife would go and show properties with me at like 8:30 at night, 9 p.m. I'm like, let's go, let's go. Um, it, it was about the hustle, and then I burned out, and then I, I was. I had anxiety. I had some type of depression. I, I, it was, it wasn't great. And I was like, what, what am I, what, what am I doing? Right. Why am I living like this? What can I change? And it came down to, for me, that's why I started a team. And I was like, you know, I, I think I can leverage better. Let's, let's look at leveraging and a combination of a lot of books helped me leverage. But one of them was, um, Tim Ferriss's four hour work week. And, they uh in the book he talks about virtual assistants and i was like what is this right so that was one piece of leveraging the other piece is i realized that i suck terrible at showing property <laughs> like i'm like i'm one of those agents like this is the kitchen this is the bathroom um you want to buy it right i was terrible i'm just terrible and so i was like maybe i shouldn't be the one that shows the property Maybe I should have somebody who loves this part and is great at it. So that was the very first piece that I, that I outsourced. And I'm like, who wants to team up with me? I've got a whole bunch of leads that I've qualified because I'm great on the phone. Um, but I just hate going to do that part. And that's what started it. And I took a big, big pay cut, man. Uh, I, when I started as an agent, you know, I was making about 500 at, at the time, 500,000 a year. And then I decided to join it to, to create a team. And I was like, wait a second. Nobody told me that I was taking pay cuts to start a team, right? <laughs> like I'm not even making a hundred thousand here. And so 
that was another learning curve in creating businesses. And I'm like, okay, um, I, I started growing. I'm like, but I am, I am gaining a lot of my time back. And, and what can I do with that time? Right. And that was create the life that I want to create, which is I want to be a better father. Right. I want to be a better, a better spouse. I want to be a better me. I want to be a better Tristan. What does that look like? If I want to be a better Tristan, well, I want to read more, right? I want to read a ton more, but I also want to think about what I read so that when I talk to people like you and I talk to other people out there, they can reflect and think, well, I didn't, I didn't see it that way. Right. Or I've never tried that, but that's interesting. And, and I can't do that if I'm just like reacting all day, be like, oh, I'm getting, hold on. I'm getting another text. I'm getting another call. Oh, you know what? I can't make it. I have to go and show this property. Oh, you know what? No, that's, and then what happens then? You just live a pure reactive life with no time to think about what's going on around you. So then you can be a better version of you. So that, that was the process. So how does a person start that process? Like, uh, let's say that, the, let's speak to the hustlers out there, right? And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure that there's some hustlers that are really listening to the show. And I'm in that, I'm in that grind. I'm in that, like, you know, yo, if you tell me no, I'm going to hit you back with seven things, why you should say yes, and I'm going to stay on you till you get it, and I'm going to hustle, and I'm going to do la, 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 la. I'm in that right now. That's me. Yeah. What's my first step? Yeah. Well, I mean, first it really depends where you are in your life, right? Because if you're, if you're in your, when I started in real estate, I was in my twenties or 23, I think I was, and I was already married. So I had no option. I was living in a room with my mom, right? Married. And I'm thinking, well, I had no option. My only thing I needed to do was hustle and hustle to me looked like I needed to go all in. I didn't have the money or the business to be able to leverage. So that was my only option. But I think if I would go back now, I, I would start looking at how can I how can I think way ahead and start creating a business earlier on? And just hustling all day isn't gonna make it happen because you, you, you do burn out. So where are you in your life right now? And wherever you are, what are you prioritizing, right? And I can tell you, I'll, I'll shortcut it for you. Business is not number one, right? Number one is you, because the better you show up to your clients, the better you show up to your family, the better you show up for yourself, the more of those things you'll get because people will want to talk to you. People will want to connect with you. People will want to be around you because you have a great energy. They want to talk to you. So number one is yourself. You've got to work on yourself daily. What does that look like? What does that look like on a on a very small level, like what are you doing today to, to make yourself better? Are you taking time to, to take a walk, little walk, read, read a page of a book, read a poem, right? Write a little bit, meditate for a minute, pray if you pray consistently. But what does that look like to make yourself better? And then the next thing is family. Family could be Dude, it could be your pets, it could be friends, it could be siblings, parents, of course, spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends. But I think that's the order, self, family, and then business. And it doesn't have to, here's what I, here's what people think. Well, how can I take care of myself and my family if I'm not working? I'm like, well, here's, here's the weird part. It's not a balance. You're not going to put eight hours of working on yourself daily. You're not going to put eight hours of working on your family daily, but you are going to put eight to 10 hours a day working on your business or businesses in, in harmony. You can work on yourself 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the evening, an hour to two hours with family and the rest can go to work and thinking and strategizing and actually doing actions. That's the cool part about this. That's harmony. Right. And people think, well, well, I have to be working all day. No, you don't. You've got to have little bits of time for the other things that make your life worth living. That's how that's how it works, man. That's how if you had to ask me the hustle, that's how the hustle should work. 
Does it work like that? No, because we look back and it's like, I don't see people comparing my, like, this is the challenge. People compare their hustle to the other person. So you can't outwork me. And I'm like, are we asking even the right question here? Like, I want to know, like, out you personally, like, if I'm looking at you and I'm saying, how, how can I, how can I challenge you to challenge me to be a better father? Right. But no, we have, we have the faces of these athletes saying, no, you can't outwork me. You can, I'm going to go, I'm going to show up early to the gym. I'm going to be the last one at the gym uh, working everybody. And then you look at their personal lives and it's like, what? They had to learn the hard way that they screwed their life up, right? I don't want to be that. I want to be the first one that shows up to my kids and be like, good morning. What's up? How's, how are you feeling today? You want, I can't wait to play Fortnite later. Let's go kick ass. <laughs> and I, my wife, hey, you know what? That walk that we took, that was great. Uh, I, hadn't, I hadn't thought about that. But my wife has become now my, dude, my, my consultant, my coach, my my best friend, she's always been my best friend, best friend, um, my wife, my girlfriend, my muse, everything. And I love that life because I've taken time to build that because that's what I prioritize, right? It's not about beating somebody else to, to work and getting there two hours early or leaving two hours later. No, man, that's the way you burn out and that's the way you ruin your life. That's not how it works. So let's let's rewind a little bit, Tristan. Let's go back to your burnout point because I, I mean, was there was there a breaking point for you? And if so, can you take us there emotionally too? Because I think a lot of times people will glaze over it. They'll be like, "I burnt out," or "I got to this point and then I snapped," and then they tell you the good part. Can you yeah, take there, us there take us to that place? Two. Yeah, two two. Because I got married really early on. I was 20, 20? 19. I think it was nineteen. Uh, and let me tell you, I fell in love because she was beautiful. I was like, damn, she's hot. Cause you're young dude. And, and I'm like, I can get along with her. She talks great. She's great. Uh, and then you have these problems like, whoa, it's like you're, you're getting two, two people from two different worlds together. And it's like, uh, it shit's about to happen. That's not going to be good. So of course, um, we didn't get along. And things are going the wrong way. And I think it was like five years in, I was like, this is, we're in danger here. We're in massive danger mode. And I finally realized, and this is a little bit on the, for me, because I grew up, um, I grew up Christian. So I, obviously I have that, that impact on me. I reflected back. And I was like, I guess it's just my fault. I, I'm going to stop blaming people. And I'm going to stop blaming her. And I'm going to stop blaming everyone else and the situation. I think it just has to start with me. And, and at the time, I was 20. When we were having these issues, I think it was 22, 23. And I, was, I had just decided to quit college because I went back to it everything was falling apart. And I think I was at the right moment where everything was falling apart in my life that I, I just broke down mentally and I cried. And I thought it starts with me and I'm not, I'm no longer going to ask my wife to be the one to change. I'm not going to say, Hey, it's your fault. I'm not going to do any of that. And and dude, it was just, like I said, it's timing for this one, but I, I took it on me and my wife remembers. And, and all of a sudden I started saying, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, honey. It's me. It's me. Let me, let me work on that. And what happened over the years, it became contagious because that, that's one thing I didn't plan on for my wife to be like, Hey, hold on. No, it's my fault. I'm like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> right. Um, it's a circle here. You start, you start, you start teaching people how to, how to create things and how to live through the example you're setting. And I was setting 
a shit example on how to be a spouse. I was not only setting a shit example on how to be a spouse, but on everything else. That was number one. Number two was when I decided to start real estate, I went all out. I was hustling. Like I said, I was bringing my wife to to showings at night, like literally like 930. I was responding to leads at 1 a.m. that were coming in from online. Uh And um, and then it was it was a crash because I was I was in during the crash as well. So uh, 2008. Uh, precursor like 2007, I, I had already started suffering um, financially. And I was like, what is going on? So um, I look back now and I understand exactly what happened because I started staying up late, um, trying to trying to cope with what was happening. Um, I couldn't sleep because I was staying up late and p- playing video games, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and And that caught up. And then I I broke down physically. I was sick for three months straight, fever. Doctors didn't know what I had. I was depressed, had anxiety, nervousness. And then uh, my wife, my wife was like, what are you doing? Right. right What are you doing? And, and I was like, I don't know. I don't know how to break out of this. And for me, it started going back to, to what I, what I remembered on how to do this. Hey, Tristan. It's going back to you, like you, you're the reason again, you, you can't put this out on anybody else. It's going to take you to go out and start walking, working out, um, being with your family. I had a small, I think it was my, my child was like a year old, Aaliyah. She was like a year or two, uh, being with my spouse more, praying more for me, right? Looking for, for the solutions instead of looking for the problems. And dude, that was a very challenging time. Uh, mentally and physically for me. And I didn't want to ever be there again. So I documented a lot of it. So I did have the, I did have the, the, the mental awareness to be like, what the hell is happening? Right. And I don't want this to ever happen again to me. So I need to understand my triggers and I need to understand how I'm breaking out of this. And I, and I did, I documented the whole thing for me. So it wouldn't happen again. And what happened is I became aware of when I was starting to go down a little bit. And I was like, oh, wait a second. I know exactly what to do. And you know who I talked to about this? Tony Horton, P90X. P90X. Because he brought up something similar. He's like, he's like, dude, I got so sick. He's 65, 66. I don't know. The guy's older, but the guy's in better physical shape than I am. And I'm like, there's no way you got sick and depressed. And he's like, yeah, dude, it happened like five years ago. So like 59, 60. And he's like, what I realized is I have this mindful list. So anytime I start feeling this thing, I go to my list and I'm like, oh, that's right. I love walking. I love rocking out with an air guitar to music, right? That's what he does. And he's crazy in a good way. And so I'm like, I, I have something like that. That's interesting, dude. Like for me, I know what it is. Like I need to go, I need to take a break and I need to go and read. I need to listen to a podcast. I need to listen to music because music puts you in, in great state quickly. I need to start getting into motion because motion enhances your emotions. And I didn't realize that until I started going through this. So I didn't want this to ever happen again to me. So for me, I just needed to figure out how to hack myself so it wouldn't happen. And that's when I started reading a shit ton more. I was like, I can do more on the reading part. And as I started reading, I realized that I wasn't alone in this. Like Marcus Aurelius, 2000 years ago, he'd be like, I don't want to get out of bed today. I don't want to get out of bed. These, 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 um, these, this, this clothes are, or this, this blanket is so damn comfortable. Right. So you see people struggling with this at a high level thousands of years ago. And I'm like, I can learn from this guy. I can learn a lot from this guy. Right. And he would tell me, like, it starts with you. It starts with humility. Your, your goal in life, your duty in life is to help others. Right. This is 2000 years ago. And I'm like, oh, dude, this is this is crazy. He's like, the more you come from a point of gratitude, the more you start appreciating life and looking for the opportunities instead of coming in and saying, oh, shit, the world's falling apart because you don't think it was falling apart then. Right. No, it's been falling apart for years. And 
it's been going great for years too. So you don't think the, the fall of the Roman Empire was a catastrophe, right? Every empire has has dwindled and fall, fell apart. So think about that. This isn't new, right? We just have to cope with it better so that we can find the opportunities and help other people at the same time. There you go. That's a long-winded answer. That's not a long-winded answer. I mean, everyone is going nuts on it right now. I mean, comments are coming in right now. It's it's incredible. Um, do me the favor, if you're listening right now, just click the subscribe button too. 85% of the people who watch us on the podcast actually haven't subscribed yet. So do that. You know you should. Um, Tristan, how do these hacks apply in marriage? Because I've had my wife call me when I was hacking stuff. She's called me on it and said, like, don't try and do that technique on me. Yeah. That's not going to work. How does that translate? And have you ever been called to the table on it? Uh, yeah, a couple of times. But but uh, the, the thing that a spouse, here's what people don't talk about. And, or, you know, I think because right now, it's a challenge because of, of the current uh, atmosphere we have with with um, genders, right? Male, female, um, and there, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with what I'm about to say. So I think that that inherently we're we're just different. Um, women and men are different, and and um, you you know me. I love I love people equally. Doesn't matter what your thoughts are. On anything but i'm talking about here um the the old school women the old school men the idea of both genders okay outside of everything else um we're different and when my wife would call me out and say hey you're doing that thing again i'm like i would smile and then i'd hug her right as 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 a husband there's nothing wrong with with smiling um like we would normally do if we got caught trying to do our hack and then just hugging and then just saying, I know, but I love you, right? What do you want me to do? And, and nobody talks about this part of this because um, my job as a husband is to make my wife feel special every day. Like I want her to know that I, that I love her, but I also desire her. Right. And that, that I also enjoy spending time with her as a friend and and part of that is that playfulness right so if you get caught on that then that's time to turn on your charm man to be like <laughs> you know to have that playfulness and i think i think we don't talk enough about the differences between men and women in in, in a good way right to say yeah we are different and we have different needs we do right like as typically uh, and I watched this with my mom and dad because it was a struggle, right? But typically, um, the 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 woman, the, the wife in this case, they want to, and whoever takes on that role, uh, they they want to feel like they're they're also supported and loved in a way because sometimes sometimes in some relationships, the wife is is almost second, right? And they don't want to feel that. They want to feel like they're as important as as the other figure in in the relationship and and that's a struggle in some relationships because you can clearly see the non-equality right and and i've i've done my I, that has always been at the forefront of the way i lead my relationship because i always tell my wife i'm like i can't and i and i do this often i'm like i can't do any of what i do without you because everything else falls apart without you, like literally. And this is why when I tell you, like, she's actually, she's my coach. She's my best friend. She's my mentor. She's, she's my lover. She's, she's my best friend. She's, she's everything. And, and I love that because I can always rely on that piece from her. And I, you have to make your spouse not only know that, but feel that and part of that is that playfulness man when you get called out that playfulness can't ever end that playfulness has to live on so what what is something i mean with the playfulness part we got that one what is the thing that tristan does that you know a, a little something to your wife that you help her to understand how much she's appreciated and how much she's loved 
Um, it's in the little things that you do uh, on a daily. It's not. It's not about buying things for people. Uh, it's it's really about the the smaller moments. In I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, there was I, in one year. It's these little things. Watch. One year I took a journal. It was a small journal. I just saw it yesterday. It's a really small journal. It's red. And every day for a year, I wrote down that's something I love about my wife. And then on her birthday, I gave it to her. And I, and I went through it with her. And it was as simple as, I love your long black hair. Right? That was some days. Another day, was, it, was, it was different. It was deeper. These little things that you do like that, that cost no money, that show that you've taken the time to think about the other person, like a simple text, like a simple video message, the things that you have at, at your fingertips that you don't use in that way to make the other person feel special, that, that's what takes it to the next level, man. Like I'm in love with my wife, right? Like I love, love, love her, right? And she knows it. Well, so just, that I, things I, like that. I think that people need to hear more of this. Like, you know, it, it's incredible because to be able to see a man that runs, I mean, probably uh, we listed off five companies that, that you're working on and that you're, and, and in addition, writing a book, in addition, speaking, in addition, being an example to all these people, being a thought leader, all these things. And it's amazing because you're saying that the foundation of all of that is loving your wife and loving your family. Yeah, it is, man. For me, for me, it is, it comes, it comes from a place where I want to help others because I've, I've been so blessed to, to live a great life. And you could say I've lived a, a hard life too, but I focus on the good part of it. And I want you to focus on that too. So I want to be able to share that with you. And I think, People, people sometimes look in, I'm, I'm very authentic, by the way, I tell people, hey, I'm struggling with this or that, Just, hey, here's how I've done it. Um, I think with people listening in is you're going to have shit days, like some days this week. What are we in? Thursday? Are we Thursday? Is this Thursday? It's Thursday. Yeah. All right. Um, I've already had like two tough days, man. Not, not, not family wise, but with work. And if I let those, if I focus on those parts of the days, like it's going to affect everybody around me. Like I had my daughter yesterday um, cry for like 20 minutes straight with me. But if I, if I would show to her that I'm having the fucking shittiest day on earth, it sometimes pushes people back to not open up because they know you're hurting. So they're not going to dump it on you. And I don't want to be that. Right. Because I can take it on myself and I have my wife, too. I'm like, hey, honey, what do you think of this? Right. And I don't usually see problems as problems. I just see them as stepping stones to getting to where I need to get to. Right. And so when people see that about you, it's like, oh, Tristan can handle a lot. Right. Because of the way I view it. Now people can come to me and be like, hey, I'm having a problem with this, 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 this and this. And I'm like, awesome. Let me help you because I've gone through it and I know how to deal with it. Opposed to people watching you fall apart because you can't handle shit, because you've never trained yourself, because you don't read enough, because you don't have a mentor, because of because you've never practiced handling a lot of shit. When people see you fall apart, they can't trust to come to you to solve their problems. And people don't put that together. Wow. Not only family, but other people you're trying to help. Right. So there you go, dude. That that has been <laughs> that has been a big one for me. Like when I realized that, I was like, "Oh, I can bring people to me and attract them if I can show them that I handle challenges and problems really well." Right. So there, that that has been a big one for me. That's a mic drop right there, man. I started the podcast, Tristan, because of my kids and uh, Maddox and McKenna. Maddox is a, a sports guy. He just got all his dreadies done. He's a big Titans fan, which makes him a very uh, wise human being. Um, and he he marches to the beat of his own drum. My daughter has the biggest heart you could ever imagine. She's in the performing arts. Um, and she has the most amazing, sarcastic uh, sense of humor that you've ever met. 
I started it because <laughs> I started I started the podcast because of the two of them, Maddox and McKenna, and I wanted mm. to take iconic people like yourself, and I wanted to show them exactly what you showed them today. That it's not about the businesses, it's not about the revenues, it's not about the top line, the bottom line, the profit margin, but it's about the heart of the person and the attitude that they have and the work ethic that they're willing to put in towards it. And so what advice would you have for Maddox and McKenna? And if you could start with their names and you could say Uncle Tristan gives you X. <laughs> All right, Maddox and McKenna. Uncle Tristan is going to give you some advice. So listen up. Put that ego away. Put that desire to put yourself first in everything away. It starts with you serving others. It starts with the mindset that you're not good enough. You're not good enough. But you're going to show up anyway. And you're going to help those people around you because they rely on you. Your duty is to show up even if you suck at things. Because as you suck at things and get better at them, that's where the confidence comes from. It's not ego. It's just confidence because you've done it for so long. And you're, you're getting better at it. And as long as you lead with humility, everything else will fall into place. That's it. Everyone out there listening, share this episode with every single person because Tristan's wisdom, honestly, we need more Tristan in the world. We need more people saying that, like, Tristan, I see you as a master. And this is the definition for me. Most people chase their dreams, but masters allow the dreams to come to them. And it's amazing because in your situation where you're at, because whenever you chase something, it runs away. Whenever you sit, the thing comes back to you. And you're sitting in your mastery and the world is attracted to that. They want to come and they want to be around. They want to listen because you're not out there shoving it down their throat. And I just, I, I, man, my mind is blown. So if you're listening and you, uh, there's someone out there that needs to hear this or you need to hear it again, share it, share it, share it, share it as much as possible. I want to thank every single person out there listening for helping us to become in the top 1% globally as far as all podcasts. And then also too, yesterday we got a, uh, we got a, a message that uh, we're in the top 5% globally of uh, all podcasts shared. So Dude. I want to, I want to thank you for that. And uh, on this, every one of you out there that's listening, I have never paid for any advertisement. We have never paid any promotion and you've all done it on your own. So the tribe that's listening right now, you deserve a for being in the top 1%. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you, Tristan, but I got to have you on again. Um, I know your time is super valuable with 80 million companies and all the things that you do and loving your wife and doing all the things and running around the world and speaking and encouraging all of us. Um, but I want to thank you, uh, Tristan, because honestly, like you absolutely, uh, like you touched my heart today and uh, you are an absolute phenomenal, phenomenal human being. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. It was really nice. You're officially off the hot seat.